Good morning. Welcome to the basic electrical engineering. We, our objective is to learn the different theorems. And since this theorem depends on the condition that the circuit must be linear, therefore we will learn how a circuit is linear and what condition it is linear. So we will be learning in detail after this video the superposition theorem, maximum power transfer theorem, source transformation, Thevenin theorem and Norton theorems. So to understand a linear property before that, we would like to say that there is a two things in this world, like if there is a cause, there is an effect. So if there is a cause in electrical term, what is a cause? The cause may be the voltage, supply voltage. So we know that if there is a DC supply voltage is given to the any network, so there is an effect, like suppose there is a DC supply voltage and it is connected with a resistor and suppose it is connected with a load and this load is suppose RL and you say whatever current is flowing through the load is called IL and the supply voltage is V. So now we can have a cause and effect. The cause is here is the voltage and the effect is the load current. So there is a cause and effect. So we are going to relate this cause and effect and we will learn what is a linear property. So what is a linearity is, it is a property of an element describing a linear relationship between cause and effect and application limited to resistors only. That means in this, throughout this example, we will limit ourselves to the application of resistor uh, only, a resistor where resistance is not changing with time or not changing because of temperature. So since the resistor is a linear element, so we will take uh, the examples with the help of resistors most of the time. So here, uh, as you say, there's a cause uh, with the voltage and the effect of the current. That is what the, and in between there is an element. So that element, if I describe this entire thing, this is the element over here. So, so whatever the cause, it is directly affecting uh, the load current over here. So how it is related, like V is, uh, like if IL is proportional to the V, so the effect, effect is proportional to the cause or how does it relate to each other, that is what we are going to see. That is this network, is this circuit, is a linear circuit or it is not a linear circuit. So here, a linear property is a combination of both, we can say one is a homogeneity, the scaling property and another is additive property. So we will uh, learn one by one what do you mean by homogeneity and another thing we will learn what do you mean by additive. So homogeneity property mean uh, if you multiply something like uh, we discussed there in the voltage let us say 10 volt is there. If you multiply this with 2 and let us say because of 10 volt there is an effect in current is suppose 2 ampere current is flowing. And uh, if you multiply by 2 means suppose you give 20 volt what is the effect should be? Effect should be here you should have 4 amperes. If this is a case that if you multiply something with the voltage and you get uh, the double of it here, so then this is called the homogeneity property. Okay? So we can say that it is if the input called excitation is multiplied by a constant, then the output called response is multiplied by the same constant. Uh, you can take input as the K multiplied with current and we get a response as K multiplied with voltage. So we can take a different example also like if a current source is there with a current I and we say that because of some resistor and other things are connected in between and you have got a load resistance over here RL. So in that case the voltage over here is V. So we can say like, yeah, this is the, if K is multiplied, that means if you multiply here with two times of the current, here the output voltage is also get multiplied two times. In that case, we, uh, we will say that this circuit is having homogeneity property. Another thing is the additive property, like additive property is, suppose you give this three experiment you have done, this one is experiment one, another is uh, experiment one, another is experiment two, another is experiment 3. So you have done three experiment with this network. Suppose any network is there and you have did it three times. 
and with different different current source. So I just make a very simple circuit just to make a quick understanding. Suppose you have a current over here and we are measuring the voltage over here. So now you give a current of like 5 ampere and you get the voltage of here is suppose 2 volts. So you give 5 amperes, you get 2 volts. Again you give current as let us say uh, 2 amperes and you get the effect over here is let us say um, uh, like a 4 by 5 volts or any other any values is there you are getting some effect over here. I am trying to get a little bit of uh, like homogeneity property at the same time. So uh, let us say you have got a cause and effect then you have a cause and effect. Suppose you give here 7 ampere now. So if you give 7 ampere what is the effect is you are giving a 7 ampere and you are getting here like 2 plus 4 by 5 around 10, 14 by 5 volts. Let us say this is like 14 by 5 volts we are getting in the output. So when you give 5, you get a 2 volts. So if you suppose give 1 ampere, so obviously what you are going to get 2 by 5 volts, you will gain, get out the output. Suppose if you give 2, so you get 4 by 5 volt in the output. Suppose you get combine these two, like you give 5 as well as 2, both together, like 7 ampere you give, and in the output you get 14 by 5 volt, then the causes of 2, you are getting the effect of 2 together added up. So this is called additive property. So you have the two things, one is the homogeneity, another is the additive. So if a circuit or a, this circuit is accepting both, uh, it is satisfying both the homogeneity property and additive property, in that case we will say the network is linear. So we can say the additive property in, in the, as per the definition, it requires that the response to a sum of input is the sum of the response of each input applied separately. Like I1, you get a separate value of V1, with I2, you get a separate value of V2. And then if you give I1 and I2 combined effect, you get V, and that V must be equal to V1 plus V2. If true, that is, that is the cause, if true. Register is a linear element because its voltage current relationship satisfies both homogeneity and additive properties. So like that there are different elements that are called linear, uh, but we restrict in the beginning that let us take the register and try to deal with the circuit behind the registers only to learn the Thevenin superposition theorem and Norton theorem other things. So we can write in a, a circuit is linear if we, if it is both homogeneity, homogeneous and additive. A linear circuit consists of only linear element, linear dependent source and independent sources. A linear circuit is one whose output is directly proportional to the input. So these are the definitions for the linear circuits. So let us take an example over here. We have got a voltage and dependent voltage source and our objective is to find what is the current I0 through it. So this is our objective here. So input voltage is V is equal to 3 volt. Let us have another voltage is 6 volt. Now we will see that if we give here V is equal to 3 volt, so what is the current I0 we are going to get? What is the current I0 we can get? Again we see if we have the V is equal to 6 volt, then what is the current we have? So if this is doubled up, so this value suppose your I0 dash must be 2 times of I0. So this is what we need to satisfy. If we satisfy this, then uh, in this problem we can say this is the linear circuit and then our confidence level will rise. So let us apply, uh, you can apply node analysis or mesh analysis. Let us apply any one of it. Let us say mesh analysis. You can write here this mesh I1 current is flowing. In this mesh you have got I2 current is flowing. So now in this mesh, if you apply the KVL and Ohm's law in this mesh, so it is like addition of all the resistance over here, 12. So 12 I1 is equals to, you have uh, uh, 4 is sharing between two mesh, so it is minus 4. So this is things already in the previous videos, we know how to handle with the mesh analysis and just we are using a very shortcut formula and easier method to write down the equation. Then you are getting here plus V, so in this side it will be minus V. So this is one equation done. So you have equation 1. Another equation you can have is in this way, you can move it clockwise again. You have 448 plus 816. 
So let me write in this side 16i2. Then you have here 4 sharing with the other mesh, so minus 4i1. And the other side you have for the voltage here you minus v, again minus vx. So on this side it will go v plus vx. So you have got the second equation like this. Third equation what we can get is that vx is here, the vx is here also. So we can write here vx is equals to this current is going in this direction, so fine. So we can say 2 into i1, so we can write 2 into i1. So we can substitute the value of vx over here and in this equation. So we can write the equation 2 again, 4i1 plus 16i2 is equal to v plus 2i1. This value will go on this side, this will be minus 6i1 plus 16i2 is equal to v. And we can just multiply with this 2 and this will be minus 12i1 plus 32i2 is equal to 2v. So now we have got two equations which we will be solving and getting the value of i1 and i2. Now our objective is to get the value of i0. So our objective is to find the value of i2 here. So we will solve it and this if we add these two will cancel each other and we can get the values over here. So these things we have solved it and we get this equation 1 and equation 4 here and after adding these two will cancel. And what remain is the 28i2 will remain here and this side minus v and 2v, this side will be v. So what is our observation is that i2 is equals to v by 28. So one very good thing is that the i2 here is seen to be proportional to v. So that satisfies the linear circuit, uh, that linearity. So now if the value of v is 3, so this is i2 is equals to 3 by 28. And if it is 6, it is 6 by 28 ampere. So that is how we can, uh, we, can we have seen that in this circuit is a linear circuit because I2, the effect is proportional to, and uh, it is, what are the two things it satisfies? It satisfies the homogeneity principle and uh, it satisfies the homogeneity principle and your additive uh, principle. So if it is homogeneous and additive, then the circuit is linear. So that is how a circuit is linear. We have learned in the subsequent videos, we will be learning about the superposition theorem and other theorems. Thank you very much.